Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I want to look at the Site Builder Guide to WordPress Security. The guide is available on my website, webtng.com, with a summary cheat sheet of action steps. In this video, I want to talk about the approach to WordPress security that's used, why I think it makes sense and would be useful for people who are building WordPress sites. WordPress powers more than a third of all websites and is a popular target for hackers. Hackers start scanning and probing for vulnerabilities within minutes of a new website going online. You know the default sample post, Welcome to WordPress? Google has indexed more than 20 million websites that still have that sample data. If you go beyond the first few pages, you'll find websites where the only content is the sample data. I wouldn't be surprised if many of these websites have no security plugins installed. I personally think WordPress could do more to make WordPress secure out of the box. But let's face it, new users are confused about WordPress security. Why is WordPress security so confusing? I think there are several reasons. First, WordPress websites have many attack vectors. It seems like WordPress core and every theme and plugin installed could present multiple surfaces for attack, not to mention the hosting environment and user inattention or mistakes. I'm not saying WordPress is insecure because I imagine it's the same for all content management systems. Second, site needs are different. A solo blog site has different needs than a membership site, which probably has different needs than an e-commerce site. So one size doesn't fit all. Also, third, hackers have found new ways to exploit a site. Security needs have evolved, technology has changed, and there are new options available. Solutions from the past may not fit now, and there are lots of outdated articles available online. Fourth, WordPress has the stated philosophy that it should provide decisions, not options. However, when it comes to security and a few other areas, there's been a tendency to punt on the harder problems, especially when they're confusing or difficult for new users. WordPress has wanted to avoid onboarding roadblocks, and so as a result, WordPress core has tagged many security needs as plugin territory. Finally, third parties then who are rushing to fill the gaps sometimes focus on some areas of security, but not all areas. And when they overlap, they do things differently. They each create their own mousetrap. Some of these are better than others, and some aren't very good. So it's not surprising that it's hard to find a good security solution. I've been using WordPress for years, and when I would choose a security plugin, I'd go into groups and forums and look at what other people were using. Basically, gravitate towards the most popular, and then consider the feature set and cost, and choose a solution. I've come to the conclusion that I was going about it the wrong way. Instead of looking at what was popular and trying to choose from that list, I should first understand what it is that needs to be protected. When you walk around your home, it's easy to see the doors and windows. But when you look at your website, it's not that straightforward. Most users see two things. They see the front end of the site and they see the admin side. New users understand we need to control access to the WordPress admin. But there's a lot more to WordPress security than that. So I've compiled a list of steps to take in securing a WordPress site. This starts early on when you select hosting. Then there are steps to take when you are installing WordPress. There are a number of tasks when setting up the site. And then there's ongoing procedures and maintenance. As you can see, some of those might relate to plugins, but many of them don't. So in the Site Builder Guide, I mention all of these steps and give an explanation of them and suggest whether or not I think they are required or optional or situational.
At the end of the long list, I've created a summary table that can be used as a checklist. My approach to items that are optional is if it's easy to do and it's not going to interfere with the operation of the site, go ahead and do it. But I wouldn't necessarily chase them down. But for things that I believe are required, I would go out and find a solution. Also, there's some things which I see as being situational, such as when you have an e-commerce or membership site or are running a site for an enterprise client. Anyway, I invite you to take a look at the Site Builder's Guide and especially at the list. There's an option to download a PDF of the list. And please give me feedback if you think I've gotten it right, if I've missed something, if there's some things that I've listed as optional that you think should be required and vice versa. I hope you find the Site Builder's Guide helpful. Thank you for watching.